So when you talk about reading biblical history, you're trying to figure out a text that's very, very old, 2,000 and more years old. So what is it? What are you reading? Well, when you open up the book of Kings or book of Joshua, one of the first things you're reading is it looks like and sounds like a story. So it doesn't sound like a kind of a dry account necessarily that you might think of, you know, boring history from a history textbook in high school. It's pretty lively. There's characters, there's action, there's plot, there's short stories and long stories. The story of David spans a number of chapters. So just what is it that you're reading? Well, you're reading a story to start. So if you know under something a little bit about how biblical storytelling is structured, then you're going to read that story better. How do they shape plot? How do the writers of this biblical historical account shape who they're writing about? How does, is God involved in this story? So a history is basically an account of the past. When these biblical history writers tell you about the past in the form of a story, then they're weaving a plot, they're weaving action into the text, but they're doing more than telling a story. They have interests, they have theology, they have some ideas that they want to get across to you in the shape of this story. So how do they do that? What kind of tuning do you need for your ears or what kind of lenses perhaps do you need for your eyes to read the interests of the storytellers when they're um, creating this account of the past and telling about events of the past. How are they doing that? How are they weaving theology into the story? How are they weaving theology? Ideas about God, ideas about human nature, ideas about the relationship between God and human nature, ideas about how humans ought to be treating each other. How do they weave ideas like that into the story that they're telling? which is a story about the past.